March 15, 1986, the first Wearing of the Green St. Patrick's Day Parade. From the very first year that we rolled the parade, I mean, I thought the crowds were huge. The first two years, Kev, it was maybe, what, 100 people? Oh, yeah. In the beginning, uh, for me, and you and I had a discussion, how big do we want this? It started as the idea of a small neighborhood parade, possibly just a block party at ZZ Gardens, which is now the overpass merchant. And you said, no, no, let's do the parade. Well, I kind of scratched my head. I said, <laughs> How the hell are you going to do this? I said, man, uh, like St. Patrick's Day is next week. <laughs> It was exciting then, in my opinion, as it is now. And the number of floats that we had in those first years, in some cases, were as much or more than we can run now. They were all, um, I said, most of them were like little trailers with kids, you know, somehow. <laughs> I mean, they would have lots of balloons. Yeah, Gene McCann would pull his party barge down. Exactly. <laughs> Andy Simon and his dump truck. Walking groups, military police cars, far too many convertibles a handful of floats, even a group of guys pushing lawnmowers in a rather synchronous and, dare I say, elegant fashion. It was a fun day. I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it was. May God hold you in the palm of his hand. What the wearing of the Green Parade has become wasn't exactly the original intent. I wanted a walking parade. Yeah. So we would set up here that morning. You'd put on a breakfast. When I reside, start smiling. And there was maybe, what would you say, maybe 20 or 30 guys oh, in here? Oh, yeah. That's the most. And um, we had a piano over here, so we got that going. Everybody sing. And um, we all had a breakfast. Then we either walked or rode up to the golf course. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Nice to see you. Okay. All ah, right. Here's a beautiful woman in green. You gentlemen will be marching right with me, and we're going to conclude bring up the tail end of the parade. And we got at the golf course, and I said, what now? I said, well, we're going to walk back down to ZZ's. <laughs> okay. This was the focal point. ZZ's, it pretty much was uh, the lighthouse. In the early years, floats lined up along the City Park golf course. The rest of Baton Rouge was somewhat oblivious that there was a parade lining up and about to roll. Yeah. Dad was here that year, you remember? Yeah. He couldn't believe it. He said, here's a guy trying to tee off on the, on the tee box that is right there next to East Lakeshore. Yeah, there were people. And there's a band walking right in front of him. He got the biggest <laughs> kick out of that. The original float lineup presented some problems, stretching across the railroad tracks and all the way down to the lakes. One year, when the parade was rolling, the, a train... Kansas City Southern. <laughs> stopped the whole, stopped right. the whole lineup. So <clears throat> that's why we moved it to the uh, parade route we've got now. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Tom Epicure and Bishop With the extended route and more space for spectators, the wear of the Green Parade exploded in popularity and size throughout the 90s. So much so, parade organizers had to implement several safety features and convince the city of their importance. Barricades are in place to control the thousands lining up to catch the throws. We've got enough people in place. We've got enough procedures in place that we, we're going to know if something is going to happen prior to it happening. Parade organizers also forced floats to have so-called walkers on each corner of the floats. I walk alongside of the float to make sure that, uh, you know, the young children and everything don't run underneath the tires. As the years went by, crowds just got bigger and bigger. Police got more complaints and became more concerned. After the parade in 1995, Perkins Road once again turned into a massive block party outside of ZZ's after the parade. And that drew the ire of city government and a handful of homeowners. I distinctly remember Archbishop Hughes saying to me, Pat, 
you've got a great neighborhood here for all these folks, but yeah. you've got to do something about what's going on down there. It was truly out of control down here with this street closure. By four in the afternoon, there was people literally wandering around uh, sitting and sleeping, and it was an embarrassment. In 1996, the city shut down the block party and even went to court over banning alcohol sales and consumption outside of the bars and restaurants along Perkins. It is a shame that the biggest party of the year in Baton Rouge is being ruined. The owner of Ivar's, Pat Quigley, told the advocate. And they came in parade day and enforced limitations on how many people you could have in your premises. Right. Oddly enough, the city closed streets downtown and tried pushing the party to another event there. The idea is to move the celebration to an area where it is more controllable, the police chief Greg Ferris explained. As the advocate reported, the St. Patrick Founders Day Festival will begin on River Road in front of the Riverside Centriplex after the parade. The central plate's all downtown. Everything's happening downtown. There wasn't anything happening downtown. Founders Day flopped as the crowds failed to follow. What did follow was a push to move the parade. And there were people that absolutely wanted this parade downtown. One was a city councilman. It was a lot of heat at the time on Mayor Tom Ed McHugh. Homeowners living along the route formed a group called the Friends of the Parade. They responded to the city, circulating a petition collecting hundreds of signatures to keep the wearing of the Green Parade in this neighborhood. Years ago, they tried to take this parade out of this neighborhood. And they tried to move it everywhere and tried to prevent them from helping. The person that championed that effort to maintain this parade route, especially up in the up on the other side of it was Donna Esnard. May the wind be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall soft upon your field. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Donna Esnard, ladies and gentlemen. There has not been a push to move this parade ever since. And it will remain in this neighborhood. So many things, exciting things have happened on the parade route. And that all gets passed down generation to generation. Baton Rouge is a great community. If you put the presentation before the community and they embrace it, they will support it. When we first took over ZZ's, the Julio's was a seafood market. <laughs> there was a donut shop, a catty corner here. There was the hardware store down the street. The amount of people this parade has brought into this area to Revival. promote this area. Oh, it's, it's one of the hottest spots in town. Exactly. When you tell people you're on Perkins Road, the base of the overpass, they know where you're at. Yeah. We have pretty much over these last 35 years been able to see what needs to be done to put this on properly. Great things often come from small beginnings in a vast attention to detail, to safety, and to community. The parade grew to what it is because of support of the community. It didn't have anything to do with us. It was the support yeah, of these people. Exactly.